What's up, Tech Heart? How's everybody doing tonight? I'm Polly, and I'm here to talk to you about something pretty important. Switching to Linux. No terminal needed. We're going to talk about Linux today, and we're going to do it on the basis of coming over from Mac OS or Windows and not wanting to learn all the Linux buzzwords or hoopla. We're not going to be using sudo. We're not going to be opening any terminals. This is switching to Linux. No terminal needed. This is going to be a short series of installing and using Linux distros. We're going to start out with what I think is the perfect Linux distro for new users, Linux Mint. It's the best all around starter distro. It's really clean. It uses Cinnamon desktop environment, which is pretty nice. And it's a decent version of Linux. There will be a couple other videos. We're going to try a couple different flavors of Linux. In the next video, we'll do a dual booting Windows and Linux so that if you want to keep your Windows installation, you'll learn how to do so. And we're going to end with Arch Linux or an Arch flavor. Because again, we're not using any terminals and we're not going to learn about sudo today. So why would anybody want to switch to Linux? I can think of a few good reasons. It's free. There's no license. There's no fees. Linux is free. It's more secure. For the most part, no antivirus is needed. And it's a solid operating system. Something like 90% of the world's servers run on Linux. It can be great for your desktop. And I want to invite you on over to the dark side. Linux can be more compatible to old and low-end hardware. You got an old ThinkPad from 2010, you can throw Linux Mint on it and it'll probably run pretty good. Also, Linux can be for bleeding edge hardware. You can have your newest laptop. Linux will work for your hardware and it will perform better on your old hardware. Linux is very customizable. From the desktop to software to the distro you use and more, there are no boundaries with Linux. If you don't like how the panel looks, change it. With Linux, you can build whatever you want. Updates are hassle-free. While you have to update your system from time to time, you'll never get stuck at the wrong moment being forced to update. Most updates don't require a reboot, and updating is just a lot easier on Linux. So we're going to use Mint today. Let's pull up the Mint website. Here we go. Let's read about Linux Mint. The latest version of the friendly operating system is here. Install it on your computer today. All right, Linux Mint 21.3. It's nicknamed Virginia. So we'll click the download button and this will pull up your options. You'll see three different options here. Cinnamon, Mate Edition, or XFCE Edition. These are different desktop environments. XFCE is the most light if you were installing to an old computer. Might be a good choice. Mate is a little more basic than Cinnamon, uh, but Cinnamon is a sleek, modern, innovative desktop environment. It's the most popular version of Linux Mint, and Cinnamon is primarily developed for and by Linux Mint. These are the three basic ones. Let's scroll down a little more. This says Cinnamon Edition Edge, support for the most modern hardware. We're going to use this today. I'm actually installing on a ThinkPad. However, I think it's nice to show if you have GPUs or more bleeding edge hardware, you'll want to grab Cinnamon Edition Edge. So just click on the download button and let that finish. After your download is complete, we're going to get Bellina Etcher, a software that lets us burn that ISO file to a USB stick. So you'll go to the Bellina Etcher website and you can just click download Etcher. Now all you do is choose what platform you're on. If you're on Windows, you could grab the portable installer. That way you don't have to install it. If you're on Mac OS, you grab the Mac OS version. I think you have to click the icon, but it's pretty easy. And if you're on Linux, you can grab an app image, which you can just click to run. So after you download Bellina Etcher, let me open up the software. Now we can click here, flash from file, and you'll go in and you'll select your Linux Mint Edge 
.iso that we just downloaded. And then we'll have to select a USB stick target. So insert your USB stick into whatever computer you're using to make this media and select it here. Make sure that this is your USB stick. If you pick your main hard drive, it will overwrite it. <laughs> so make sure that you pick your USB stick. I know that mine's a Pony 31 gigabytes and click select. And the last thing to do is click flash and enter a password. Now you'll just let Bellina do its thing It'll take a couple minutes, but when that's done, we can get to installing Linux Mint for the first time. As stated earlier, we'll be doing a Windows and Linux dual boot installation on the next video. Tonight, we're gonna install Linux Mint as if we wanted it to completely take over whatever computer we're installing it to. Uh, whatever hard drive we use is going to be completely rewritten and we're gonna have Linux Mint. So I'm gonna let that bad boy finish up and I'll catch you when we're rebooting into that USB stick. All right. All right, as that finishes up, go ahead and take a sip. And if you wanna live life on the edge, you can skip the validation process. Oh boy. I'm gonna go grab that USB stick. I'm gonna insert that USB stick into the ThinkPad and I'll catch up with y'all right over here. Let's go! So we've decided on Linux Mint. We've downloaded the Cinnamon Edition Edge ISO, the image that ships with a newer kernel to be able to support the latest hardware chipsets. Our USB is inserted in our computer and we have to boot now. You'll have to find the bias button for your computer. We're on a ThinkPad, which makes it really easy. Let me press the power button. You can see on screen, I have to press enter. Sometimes these buttons are F10, F1, enter, and you can do a Google search to find yours. Now I'll press F12 to choose a temporary startup device. What this allows us to do is pick the USB stick that we have inserted into the computer. Mine's the Pony USB, so once I select this, it'll start booting into Linux Mint installer. Let's go for it. Select the first option, and this will get us booted into the Linux Mint installer. Pretty exciting, right? Okay, and just like that, we're in Linux Mint. Before we start the installation, we should connect to Wi-Fi if you're not connected to your ethernet. So I'll select my Wi-Fi and enter a password. Do the same so that you have internet access. There we go, connection established. And now you'll see the only icon on screen is install Linux Mint. Easy enough, right? Linux Mint is almost easier to install than Windows. And I'll take you through the steps. First of all, select your language, mine's English. So I'll click continue and then select your keyboard layouts. Again, mine's English, so I can just select continue. This page says multimedia codecs, and it's unchecked, but we wanna select install multimedia codecs. Multimedia codecs are required to play some video formats and to properly render some websites. Think YouTube, Netflix, etc. Then you can click continue. And now we have to decide which type of installation do we want. The first option is erase disk and install Linux Mint. This will completely erase your hard drive. It's what I'm going to choose. However, if you had Windows installed on your system and you wanted to do a dual boot, there would be another option here allowing you to do so. As long as you're okay with completely erasing the disk, all you have to do is select the first option and click install now. It's going to warn us that we are writing to disk now. I'll select continue. Now it wants to know our locale information. I'm in Los Angeles, so this is just fine for me. Select where you are in the world and click continue. Finally, we have to give some user information. For me, it's just TechHeart, and I'll use that same username. For the computer name, you can name it anything you like. I'm gonna name mine Mint dash the model number of computer that's in here, ThinkPad T480. Then make sure you enter a password and verify it. 
You could select login automatically, which when you boot the computer, you wouldn't have to type your password. However, we want a password, so we'll leave require my password to log in. If you need to encrypt your home folder, you could do so here. Let's click continue. And listen, that's gonna be it. Now just let the Linux Mint installer run through, and I'll catch you on the flip side. That was stinking easy, right? Oh yeah, daddy-o. Go, go, go. I hustle every single day I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave uh, To the system, I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way uh, Or the highway And in the driveway Is a nice range Cause I grind through the climb I invite pain You'll never hear me, bitch Nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch And you can go and obtain Anything you want, anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredient It's belief uh, They'll deceive with the negativity But I just slide right back Low, you can still go Even when you feel slow You can still go Even when there's no hope You can still go I never ran Said a no Man, I still go After you've ran Through the entire installation We're done How simple was that? Linux is easier In my opinion To install Than any other Operating system Sure There are some distros That are more in depth Than this But Linux Mint Makes it super easy So now all that's left to do is either continue testing on the live USB or restart now. Let's check out the installation, so we'll click restart now. Boom! We'll be prompted to remove the installation medium, and I'll do so, and then we can press enter. Let's go Linux! Your system will reboot, and I'll catch you in Linux Mint. And yeah, dudes, look at that. We're booted into Linux Mint easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So enter your password and we'll get into Linux for the first time. Let's go, Rockstar. Super cool. We saw our connection was established. It remembered our Wi-Fi from the installer and we're presented with the Welcome to Linux Mint screen. Let's walk through these steps. Welcome to your new operating system. This welcome screen will guide you through your first steps, show you how to find help and where to get more info about Linux Mint. On behalf of the development team and everyone involved in this project, we'd like to thank you for choosing Linux. We hope you'll enjoy using it as much as we enjoy working on it. Have a great time and don't hesitate to send us your feedback. Whoever said Linux wasn't a welcoming community? Let's click on Let's Go and check it out. It gives us a whole assortment of things to do. Let's customize Linux Mint. First, on Desktop Colors, you can choose your accent colors. And if you prefer dark mode, because we know you're a hacker, change it to dark. I like gray icons. You can see right down here the different icon colors, but you can go through and select whatever color scheme works best for you, from purple to yellow to gray and orange. There's also different styles you can choose from and advanced settings, but we won't go into that. Let's close that part down. Now we're in dark mode, super cool. You can set up system snapshots. These are backups of your installation. And if you ever do any changes that break your Linux installation, you can roll back to a previous environment that isn't broken. Let's set that up. I'll show you how easy it is. Click launch and give it your password. Select snapshot type. We'll leave on rsync, but you don't need to worry about that. We don't have to be technical to get this going. We'll click next and it'll estimate your system size. You can select your main hard drive, or if in your setup you have another drive that you'd like to back up to, you can select it here. Click next, and then you'll select how many snapshot levels you want. It suggests five daily snapshots. That's fine. And I'll also keep one monthly snapshot. This means we'll be able to roll back for the previous five days. And as your system gets older, you'll always have one monthly backup. You can add any other settings that you want, but let's click next, and this will exclude our home folder. So just like Windows, you have a C colon slash users and then your username, we're leaving out those files. If you want to add them, you would click include all files here, but we just wanna back up the system. This is for if we ever break Linux Mint. Click next, 
and you're set up to complete. You can click finish and time shift will open. I'm going to drag that over here because I'm going to run our first backup. I'll click create and I'll let this run in the background, but it is currently creating a snapshot of our system. Let's continue on the welcome screen. Here's your driver manager. Let's launch that. If you do have a GPU card, you have two options. You can install the open source drivers, which are okay and decent, or you can use non-free NVIDIA or AMD drivers. These work better and are from NVIDIA, but some Linux purists don't want non-open source software. At any rate, I don't have a GPU and I don't need any more drivers. I'll close that. You might have heard from other Linux people that to update your system or install packages, you have to go to the terminal, but we're not using those words in these videos. So there is an update manager in Linux Mint. Let's launch that. And from the update manager, you can completely update your system without any terminal. I'll click OK and Linux Mint will search for upgrades. It has updates that are available. So let's click on install updates. It will let us know what it's updating you don't have to know what these are, but they're required for an updated system. We'll click OK, enter our password, and as easy as that, Linux Mint will update your system. Super easy, dude. While that's finishing, we can see our first backup is complete. You can click right here and give it a comment. First backup ever. I'm on Linux, dude. So there's our first backup. As the system progresses, it will make daily backups automatically and also save the one monthly that we told it to. So I'm gonna close down time shift and you can see Linux Mint updating our system. All right. And after which you have a completely updated system. Now, there's two notifications here. One is that a reboot is required. Most of the time, unlike Windows, when you update Linux Mint, there is no reboot that's required. However, at times when the kernel's updated or some big piece of software has been changed, they'll ask you to reboot your computer. So we'll do that in one moment. With Linux, you can choose when to do so. The second notification is, do you want to switch to a local mirror? Mirrors are the repositories that your software packages come from. It's just like where they're located in the world, but we want them as close to us as possible. So I'm gonna click yes here. We'll give it our password. And it'll pull up this software sources menu. There's two mirrors, main and base. First, let's click on main and just wait for a while for these speeds to populate. Okay, easy enough. I'll pick the mirror that's fastest for me. So I'll select the first option and click apply. It says your configuration changed. I'll press okay. That'll update our package manager and I'll move to the next source and do the same. Let the speeds populate. Choose the fastest one and click apply. Then update your cache again. That's it. You can close down software sources and we can close down update manager. Now it wanted me to reboot, so I'm going to do so, but with the magic of video editing, I'll catch you right back here. All right, we'll get logged in. And now we can continue. We'll scroll down. And the last thing we did was the update manager. So now we can look at system settings. This is the Cinnamon desktop environment and there's a lot that you can change. I'll show you just a couple things. First, you can select a different background. There's many different Linux Mint backgrounds. And then you can select one for this exact version of Linux Mint. We're on Vanessa and I think I like the bubble and click on back. There's different effects in the desktop environment that you can change if you'd like to. And there's some functions that I think are important. One is gestures. Let's search for that. Okay, we can click on gestures and if we Enable this, now when we swipe left or right with three fingers, we'll move workspaces. If we swipe up with three fingers, we'll see all of our workspaces. 
And if we swipe down with three fingers, we'll see all of the open windows. Pretty cool, right? There's many other things that you can do. You can add applets, extensions, make changes to your desktop. It gets pretty cool. So we'll leave it at that for now. The next is Software Manager and Firewall. Let's do Firewall first. Enter our password. And you can simply turn the status to on and you're protected. It'll deny all incoming and allow all outgoing. You can set up different rules if needed, but if you'd prefer to live life on the edge, you can disable the firewall. I'm not that hardcore, so I'll leave it on. Now, the last thing in the welcome screen is Software Manager. This is just like your Microsoft Store or your Mac App Store. There we go. It looks really nice. It shows suggested softwares, categories, top rated, and you can search up top. Now, some of you guys are gamers and are coming to Linux, but still want to experience your games. We can still do so. First, let's search for Steam. Linux Mint does come with one caveat or thing that you need to know about software packages. Notice that there's two Steams. The Flat Hub icon indicates that these are flat pack packages. Non Flat Hub installations are from the Linux Mint repositories, whereas flat packs are softwares that are packaged in a way that all of their dependencies are in that installation. So, what I suggest to new users to Linux is if there's a Flat Hub installation available for the software you're installing, try it first. As long as it works perfectly, that's a better way of installing because it has every dependency needed all packaged up in that flat pack. If you have any issues with that software, you can revert to the Linux Mint repository. Let's install Steam and we'll select the Flat Hub version or the flat pack. Just click install. Choose continue, and in just about a minute, Steam will be installed. You can launch it from right here. I'm gonna swipe over to a different workspace and press the Windows key, and I'll search for Steam, and I can launch it. You didn't think it was that easy, did you? So there's Steam, I'm gonna close that. And back in our software manager, we can push the back button. Now, the other softwares that you might need to install AAA titles or games that are not supported on Linux through Steam are Wine, which is a Windows API that allows you to install Windows applications on Linux, and another one called Lutris. Lutris is a video game preservation platform. It's a helper that allows you to install Windows games within a menu, like GOG or Rockstar games, or titles that you just have to install by themselves. I believe Lutris automatically installs Wine, so let's select the Lutris FlatHub version and click Install. We'll select Continue and give it a minute. Okay, let's swipe over to Workspace 2 and we'll use the Window key to search for Lutris. You can see that you can press the plus button and search the Lutris website for installers, import previously installed Lutris games, install a Windows game from an executable, install from a local install script, or import a ROM. Lutris will help you add titles that are not available through Steam. Nice! Now let's go back and search for Wine in the software manager we can see three versions of Wine available. One is a flat hub, which I previously told you you should use first. However, its version is 3.0. Then there's a version 3.4 and a version 4.0. In this instance, we'll install version 4.0 as it's the newest Wine version available. Let's install it. Needs a password this time. With that done, you have Wine installed. Wine is the underlying application that Lutris will use when needed. Let's install some other software packages that you might enjoy. There's GIMP. It's a graphics editor like Adobe Photoshop. VS Code. Discord. OBS. 
and a myriad of other packages and software titles that you might want to install. Linux is awesome, and they have an app store just like other operating systems. You don't have to live in a terminal or know what a sudo is. Now we can look around the system a little more since we're done with the welcome screen. Let's go!